Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to the Sweetwater Minute. We have a special guest joining us today. This is Martin Seidel from Austrian Audio, all the way from Vienna. Yes, that's true. It's great to have you here. Hey, thanks for coming by. To meet you. You've been here before, though. I've been here before. Yes, uh, I've been here with a different head. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, I worked 16 years for Harman. Right, right. And uh, quite some time for an old, well-known microphone manufacturer. Right, which leads us to Austrian Audio. Yes. Which is a, uh, a pretty new a pretty new company, about two years old. Yeah, two and a half years old, uh, founded 2016. Mm -hmm. And uh, we basically you know, are now 35 people. Uh, and I can say it's a lot of well-experienced people in there. Right. Uh, you may or may not have heard, but uh, there was a closure of, uh, of a factory in Vienna and this team was let go and I thought this is an opportunity to hold them together. Mm -hmm. And by the way, there are some mouth to feed, some families behind that. Sure. Uh, so this was a win-win for everyone. Right, right. And you managed to accumulate with a startup company, as you were saying earlier, when we were talking before the cameras rolled, uh, three or four hundred years of experience all in uh, yes, kind of true. one fell swoop there. <laughs> Isn't that cool for a startup to say we have 400 years in experience in what we do? Come on. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty great. That's pretty great. Yeah. And the, uh, you've released your first products, which we are proud to have here at, uh, at Sweetwater. We're going to talk some about those, the OCA and the OC818 and uh, the remote and things. So we'll, we'll get into some of that. But tell us a little bit about the legacy that, that was brought forward into Austrian Audio. Well, you know, it's, uh, you know, we are extremely focused on engineering. So out of these 35 people, we have 28 engineers. Mm. So we're pretty lightweight on the overheads and we want to be more creative and more productive. The people are holding several patents in acoustics uh, from their former employment. Uh, they have designed some of the, let me say, best selling large condenser microphones in this world and, and headphones. I mean, headphones is another expertise we are going for. and and you will see more to come. But, uh, uh, you know, the heritage really comes from, from the knowledge um, people had in their head. Right. We couldn't start with any products, of course, because it's a new company. Sure. Um, but uh, I would say, you know, we, we got a lot of friends and, and, and the history there is pretty old. Right. Uh, so even some retired people uh, who wanted to get reinvolved and, and brought up a wide range of knowledge to us, right. which would have gone lost. Right, yeah, uh, yeah certainly. So that's where we, we really started to, to, well, from where we, where we were, but we, we really reinvented the wheel a little bit because, you know, if you, if you create a new product like a microphone that should be used in high-end studios, you, you have to start with the heart of it. Right. You start with a capsule because you don't take anything that's there. You want to, to improve, to evolve to something really new. Right. Right. And, and we were very proud that we even had some support of a, of a, of a legend, of a veteran in this industry. Uh, I mentioned to you before, it is Conrad, Conrad Wolf, right. who is the original designer of the CK12 capsule. I mean, it's one of the most copied capsule in the world. Right. And, and you know, as he heard from, from audio, Austrian Audio, um, uh, he called us really and said, you know, guys, I'm interested. Um, and, and, and now he's 84 years old, but right. very switched on. and. Uh, Got us some secrets. Yeah, I bet. I bet. <laughs> well, the result is the heart of these two microphones, which is a CKR12. And so you've, you've taken that legacy of that, uh, that kind of uh, prototypical capsule, if you will, the one yeah. that everybody kind of points yeah. to, and you've, uh, you've captured the essence of it, but you've also brought it into the new era. So tell us about that capsule. Well, the capsule um, is targeted to really meet this uh, most a wanted sound of this smooth and natural height. You can even add height on your mixer without the height getting harsh. You know, mm -hmm. That was the target. So the sound was pretty clear that we wanted to achieve. Um, I mean, yes, these old brass capsules were great in some respect, but we wanted to lose some of the negatives. I mean, uh, there, there was, in bad days, uh, there was a yield of 20%. Hmm. Right? Wow. So sometimes only one microphone a day left the factory. This was not something we were looking for. Right. right. So uh, um, over the years, this capsule uh, was changed a lot and, and there was a plastic version of it. It's also not what people are looking for. We're looking for this uh, classical sound. And part of it is the weight and the mass of the capsule. Mm -hmm. um, so plastic was not an alternative. We were experimenting with material, we were researching. And this one um, is also already patent pending. The full housing of the capsule is made of ceramic. Hmm. 
That's where the CKR comes in from. Okay. Uh, and um, the ceramic is a great, great material. A, uh, if you manufacture it uh, professionally, it is a very smooth and uh, continuous process. You don't have too much deviation, right? And mm -hmm. we're talking about micromillimeters there, right? Right. The second thing is it doesn't change over time. The material is stable. Um, you don't have any corrosions, stuff like that. And the most appealing thing, it's the perfect isolator. Hmm. You have no electricity shortcuts or anything like that. This was the problem of the old microphones. You remember, you brought them in from a cold van into the studio. You had sizzling, you had rumbling, right. because you had uh, the moisture bringing electricity problems into the capsule. Mm -hmm. As ceramic is an isolator, this is gone. Right. right. So we have the same mass, uh, we have uh, the same weight, we have the same dimension, and we have recreated this really heritage sound but we have managed to uh, find a process and a material that gives us a, a constant, stable, high quality output. And uh, when we're talking about the products later, I mean, this gives us the opportunity to deliver any of these microphones within a sensitivity deviation to each other plus minus half a dB. Wow. So every of these products is a matched pair. Right. right. So that helps uh, a lot. Yeah, that consistency means a lot, especially as you, as you mentioned, as you add more and more microphones and you want to have them sound the same and work with them and know what you're going to get when you pick the microphone up. Or doing 3D sound. Sure. You don't want one matched pair. You want five or more microphones matched. Right. So beyond the capsule experience mm. that the company has, there's also a lot of acoustics experience, mm -hmm. experience there. Uh, tell us about how that factors into microphone design. Uh, well, quite a lot because uh, the OC stands for our open condenser. So we call it the open acoustic technology, which we will bring in all our products really. What's open acoustic? I mean, in an ideal world, the capsule would fly in the free field, free field acoustics, mm -hmm. right? It's not possible because you have to mount it into somewhere and you have to have electronics in there. Now, the capsule is not mounted onto the PCBA, but it has a suspension, a silicon suspension. So it's basically suspended within the cage so apart from really shielding it from, from body noise, even on a live segment, if you don't use the, the big studio spider, mm -hmm. it's even very well shock suspended internally. Acoustic wise, of course, this gives you the best free field experience and a very small little detail, but it makes a big difference. Any microphone, for example, has on the bottom of it, the electronics, right. and that's covered with a plate with a plastic or metal sheet, whatever, you have reflections from it mm -hmm. because it's like a room, right? Sure. Uh, and even if it's that uh, small distance, it might be, let me guess, at six to seven K, mm -hmm. you would have reflections. That's what we try to prevent by uh, putting a diffuser at the bottom of the mic. So over the electronics, there's a diffuser leading uh, the waves out into the lower body of the microphone, so there are no reflections at all internally. Mm. So you could call this acoustic experience, sure, because uh, we try to, to create the best possible free field acoustic that can be done within a microphone. Right, right. So that really helps with the purity of the sound and not having exactly. those reflections. You don't exactly. have phase issues with different frequencies and things. Exactly. So, yeah, and, it, and it's going to also help with the more natural sounding top end when you get into the 7K region and some of those areas. So Exactly. So I mean, of course, you can consider that and you can uh, play also on, on, on DSP afterwards in the post-production, but why not start with a perfect signal? Right, right. You had an interesting opportunity with this because with so much experience making one of the most uh, uh, recognized microphones in the world, but you were able to look at that and say, you know, this could be better, this could be better. And one of the areas that interested me was in the actual screen and the shell, the way that you had remanufactured that to give it better uh, Faraday screening. Yeah. Point one, yes, Faraday screening, and then it's really in the uh, completely protected. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, uh, it is also um, coming from experience that it has a kind of a flat shape, mm -hmm. right? Um, that in combination with a suspended capsule gives you a great uh, opportunity to just use it in front of a guitar camp, for example, right? Mm -hmm. You can even use it hanging it down from, from the, what do you call it, the handle, the handle. Mm -hmm. right? Uh, and um, and the shape was to, to many reasons was 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 important to us. You know, does it look like a vintage mic? No, and it shouldn't. Mm -hmm. It's a new product. It's a new generation of product. But still, 
uh, it was very, very important to us to have the cage as big as possible and the solid part as small as possible. Again, coming back to the acoustics, to the free field experience, right? Right. right. Gave us some headache, I can tell you, to, <laughs> to, to do these, these grills in this size. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Yeah. So why don't we talk about the two microphone models we have here. We have the, uh, the OC8 and the OC818. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the two microphones. Well, basically, the OC818 is the top model or flagship, if you want to say so, if you want to call us flagship one of, out of two products we have released right now. Right. right. <laughs> um, but uh, the 818 um, has a lot of features because it has a double capsule in there. So it's a dual uh, membrane, large condenser mic. Mm -hmm. What it gives to you, of course, is uh, nothing new in that respect that you can switch between various patterns, right? So figure of eight, hypercardiate, cardiate, omni. But if you look into a little bit more details what's on there, um, even on the cardiate mode you can see that there's something special with it. And uh, it's a dual cardiate. Um, why dual cardiate? Because on the back side of the microphone you have a little mini XLR plug. It's a five pin okay. where you can uh, plug in a cable which is in the package basically, right? And if you do that, you now have both capsules led separately out wow. of the microphone, hmm. right? Um, why would you do that? Um, you can record both capsules, and if you know how patterns are made by subtracting or adding the two signals to each other, you can do that now in the post-production, mm -hmm. right? So if you mix on your mixing desk, the loudness between the two capsules you, after the recording, decide if this was a hypercardiate or a cardiate or even an omni mode. Right. right? And that right. changes the crea creative possibilities you have after the recording a lot. Um, and also, we have created uh, a really, really cool plugin for that function that you not only can, on your mixing desk, change the voltage, but you can basically in five different bands change the pattern. Mm -hmm. And take care, it's not an EQ. It's right. a completely phase linear thing you're doing here, which is important for, you know, recording. Sure. Um, but you can, for example, decide on the low end, you want to have a, a, a wide card yet because you have it on the snare, for example, right? And what do you typically get on the snare? You get too much hi-hat, right? Right. So uh, on the low end, mid-low end, you leave uh, white card yet, whatever sounds best to you. But you can decide in a higher frequency band, let's say uh, 3K or whatever the, the, the hi-hat sits, to beam it to a hypercardiate. And basically only the directivity of what the microphone is picking up in that frequency band is cut out. You're not EQing it, right. you're just leaving the signal aside and get a much better result in your channel differentiation mm -hmm. when you do a recording like that. For mm -hmm. example, one of the uh, options you have with a plug-in, I mean, we have done some, some uh, training videos on that and, and you definitely can look that up. And it would be an hour only about the plug-in and I don't, right. want to, <laughs> I don't want to go that way. That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing that within that you can separate the separate bands and, and work with the polar pattern individually. Yeah, you can do a lot. You can use it as a, as a you know, um, overhead or, or jazz recording for drum kit, mm -hmm. right? And if you're in a good room, you can later decide what part of the room you want to listen to your recording, what not. Right. You can even, if you want to do the extreme, you can only listen to the back and you would only hear the reflections and not the direct signal. Right. Uh, right. I mean, that's crazy, yeah. but creative. Creative you know, options, and sure, you have certainly. Options, yeah, right? certainly. So that's more for the post-production and recording part of it. Mm -hmm. But a very nice feature and um, you know, a little bit of our heritage comes through here as well, because if you remember the first C12 in the 50s had this massive metal box for the uh, control room right. where you can switch the patterns. Right. right? Uh, we brought this into the modern world, really, um, because this is not only an output for the second capsule, but at the back you have also an input for this OCR8, which is a remote control Bluetooth dongle. Mm -hmm. And with that, you can now completely remote control the microphone. So you can remote control all the patterns, all the attenuation pads, all the high pass filters. Let's say you use it as an overhead uh, and the drummer was not that inspired during the sound check. 
may happen, right? Right. And suddenly he, at the gig, he plays harder and the mic runs into a clip. You just remote control flip in uh, uh, minus 10 dB, right? And you're safe. Right. Nobody goes to stage, fiddles around with a microphone. Or you do a classical recording, you do a room recording three meters up, uh, and you want to alter the pattern to listen into the room more or less, no step letter, you can call, remote control it. Even from the control room to the isolation booth, you know. Right. You can walk in, but you don't have to walk in, right? Sure. And interrupt probably the, 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 the guy who's playing, let him play and try out what is the best settings from outside on your iPhone or on your Android. Um, it's both free of charge. Mm -hmm. You can download the apps uh, and play around with it. Nice. And I think what's even more important on that is you not only can switch between Cardioid 8 or Omni, uh, you can create any pattern in between. You have 255 steps where you seamlessly can slide from a figure of eight through the hypercardioid, cardioid, omni, and you can create any pattern you want. Let's say you create a very narrow hypercardioid because you have a trombone player uh, live on stage, mm -hmm. two edges, so you don't care um, too much about the front side. You let a little bit of a hypercardioid in there, but you want to cut, cut out the sides where the wedges are, and probably he needs minus 10. So you can all program on that. And then the last uh, um, setting you have in there, you program into the mic. You don't need the dongle anymore. You write the name of the trombone player on this, and for the tour, it's his microphone. And there you have this fifth position where you have stored your own pattern. You ah, okay. So even offline. Right. right, right. So that's your individual pattern. You can program into it. Sure, sure. Wow, a lot of features. Yeah. Yeah. And having the app and having the, the control from the plugin and things is really unprecedented, very cool. But what's important to say, nothing in there is digital, mm -hmm. only the control. So if we change the polar pattern, there is no DSP. It's important, you know, for, for the purists, and I'm one of them, right. know, no digital in the audio chain. What we do is we change the voltage to the polar. We change only voltage between the capsules and mix internally the capsules with each other. Okay. It's a fully analog signal. It's in a full analog recording mic, right? Right. It just gives you additional options to play. Right. Right. That's great. And what kind of sound can we expect from this microphone? Are you, were you looking for a really neutral sound or were you looking to provide a vintage coloration or what were you after? No. Uh, it is rather neutral. Um, it has this typical little uh, um, bump up. In, in the region of, of, of seven, seven kilohertz, mm -hmm. where it opens up a little bit and it gives you more space. Sure. Um, and all the middle through to the low is very neutral. And, you know, we had great reviews recently on a um, Sound on Sound, a sure. large magazine, five star, uh, and, and they did uh, recordings with saxophones, uh, piano, drums, vocals. It was compared to quite more expensive products right? mm -hmm. um, and, and, and the result was impressive. Uh, I mean, we, we, I'm very confident, I must say. The sound is, is really expected to be close to what a vintage maybe 414 was with a brass capsule. Right, right, uh, nice. which is a very sought after sound. Yeah. 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 Great. So we have the, uh, this is the 818, hmm. and then we have the 8. Yeah. And what is no, the difference 18, there? 18, yeah. I'm sorry, the 18, I apologize. Yeah, no, no problem. Well, the difference is, is not too big, but it's very big. <laughs> yeah. Same sound, same sensitivity, same uh, capsule built in there, but just a single capsule. Mm -hmm. So it takes away all the options. You don't have the separate output, you don't have uh, uh, the programmable patterns, there is no pattern switching, it's a pure cardiac professional recording mic. Okay. The nice thing is, you know, um, you know, for rehearsal studio guys or, or project studio guys who probably want to have the flagship and do all the creative stuff, um, as I mentioned to you before, even between the mics, the deviation is not more than half a dB. Mm -hmm. So if you put that one on a cardio mode, you could even stereo match pair it with an 18 <laughs> because it sounds exactly the same. Right. So you get the same sound quality, no compromise on that, but you get less features because you don't have the second capsule. Okay. Right. Uh, other than that, same, same attenuation pads and same high pass filters. 
which by the way are, are, are also designed a little bit clever, I would say, as the attenuation pad minus 10 dB really affects the capsule, so it reduces the voltage again to the capsule, mm -hmm. and that way the capsule can handle more sound pressure level. Right. So each of the microphones can handle 158 dB. Wow. Pretty much everything. Pretty you much everything, yeah. Throw it into a bass drum, it won't clip. Right, right. right. So the same filters there and here, uh, so just a single membrane uh, cardioid microphone for really high quality recording. Right, right. So between the two of them then you really can either set up a stereo pair, have one for the critical source where you want to have all the control, maybe outfit the rest of the, some of the uh, less critical uh, with, uh, with where you don't need as much control but you still need the same sound quality. Yeah. So you really have the option with both of those. And I was uh, very surprised with both of them at the price they come in at. They're, they're far less expensive than I expected them to be. Well, I think an important thing to mention is, uh, and, and we're proud about that to be honest, mm -hmm. made in Vienna again. Right. Right. And uh, they're all manufactured in Vienna. We do the capsules in-house, the membranes in-house, we assemble them in Vienna. We, we get all the metalwork uh, and, and done in Austria. So, uh, and yes, uh, you know what? We want to be compelling. I mean, it's critical. Uh, we don't want to become rich and fortunate with the first products. We just want to have really nice products out in the market. So uh, we targeted a price that, you know, even an ambitious uh, musician can afford to. Right. So the, the large one comes at 999 mm -hmm. and uh, the little sister here comes at 699. Right. Uh, right. Great prices. I think it is. Yeah. I think it's made in Austria, handcrafted. Right. And that includes the case, includes the shock mount, uh, uh, the windscreen? Yeah. It, it includes, uh, there's different packages available. So the okay. studio package includes uh, the professional uh, studio spider. Mm -hmm. uh, it includes a clip as well. It includes a windscreen. Okay. Uh, and it includes, of course, your cable to connect uh, the second uh, capsule. Mm -hmm. right? For the smaller one, same content but the cable because there is no second output. Of course, right. right. Uh, so that's all in the box. If you want to remote control it, the OCR8 uh, comes as an accessory separately. Mm -hmm. It comes for 149. Okay. Um, and there is also a dual pack available, so which is more targeted to the live market, uh, where you have two in the box. Uh, they don't contain the spider because most of the time live you're not using the spiders a lot, sure. right? So two in the box. No spider, but all the rest is in there as well. The cables, the windshield, there's the clips. Uh, but you save a hundred bucks. Uh, so lower price point if you buy the life pad with two microphones in it. Right, right. And it's also life pack available for the OC18. Okay. Same thing here. No spider, save a hundred bucks. Sure. So you can tailor it to what you're you're going to be doing with the microphone, your applications. Yeah. And if you you know if you if you want to buy the life set and 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 later you figure, hey, you know, I want a spider, it's available as a single accessory as well. Sure. Right. And what about the future? More microphones coming? I know you said you're working on headphones as well. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, uh, we're here to stay. Uh, good, <laughs> good. Um, you, you'll see um, two headphones launching uh, and shipping around NAM. Mm -hmm. So a few months from now. Um, and yes, of course, there's a lot of experience uh, in that segment as well. Um, we also there create our own drivers. We don't take anything from the market because there are a lot of things to talk about. So headphones, um, and then in the course of the first half of next year, um, you'll see a full set of live microphones, again, in the upper quality range, you know. Uh, our mission really is, we want to add something to each product that wasn't there. Right. right? It needs to be a tool for a person who wants to experience something new, uh, play with his creativity. So even a handheld microphone is not always a handheld mic. Well, I, we know, you know, and, and there's a range available in the market. Yeah? Right. And there is a, a certain price point we will not meet, uh, below $100, that's not where we play. But uh, live microphones, instrumental microphones, both dynamic and condenser, mm -hmm. you can expect also uh, bass drum microphones and the more headphones. And we're not talking about the far future, but you might see us coming wireless as well. So. Oh, nice. Nice. So things are looking bright for a lot of new products from Austin. Yes. yes. Right. Well, we're so excited to have you uh, part of the family here at Sweetwater. 
Well, thank you for having me. Absolutely. We appreciate you sitting down and spending some time with us and discussing the microphones and the heritage of the company. It really is an incredible legacy, and it's so cool to come back to it with new uh, innovative ideas as well. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Yeah, thanks for coming in. Great to see you. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining me for the Sweetwater Minute. I'm Mitch Gallagher.